Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.7, an Ergis F1EE Mirage module. Welcome to Tutorial 1, Startup. Today I'm going to take you through the standard startup for the Mirage F1EE. Before we continue though, I'm going to take you through the different variants that we have uh, in this module as provided by Ergis. Uh, currently, there are three variants of the aircraft with a further one, a fourth one, due to be delivered at some point in the future. Uh, each variant has a two-letter code, with the first letter being the variant and the second letter being the country for which that variant was delivered. Uh, this one being the F1EE, uh, meaning that it's an F1E model as de uh, delivered to España uh, or Spain. Uh, we currently have the F1B or BE in the game. They're all the Spanish variants, uh, which is the two-seat trainer. We have the F1C, which is the early model interceptor. And this version, the F1E, which is uh, an upgraded variant of the aircraft, and it's a little bit more multi-role, although still primarily an interceptor. Uh, the upgrades that the E received were an INS navigational system, a refueling probe, and an upgraded RWR. With those exceptions, basically everything that I will show in these videos apply to all three variants. In the future, we will be getting the F1M, which is the modernized version of the Mirage F1, uh, with a, a semi-glass cockpit and some other upgrades. Uh, you can see here that we start off with the ladder attached and the, the pilot uh, with his helmet on the canopy rail. Uh, these items, oh actually, uh, chocks are also in. Uh, these items are automatically removed when we turn on the battery, so just be aware. And let's jump into the cockpit and get started with the startup. Now, Ergis are one of those module makers who I'm very happy to say have included a full checklist in the kneeboard. Uh, all module makers, in my opinion, should be doing this. This is absolutely perfect. So we're going to follow the included checklist. It does include some cockpit preparation stuff, but actually in the case of the F1, these are things that you should do because uh, not all of the switches are quite in the correct positions uh, in a cold start. So let's flip to the beginning and we've got the entering the cockpit checks. We're going to make sure parking brake is set. It's this yellow and black uh, lever here. You want to make sure it's pulled all the way out and it's sitting at this 45 degree angle. Rudder pedals adjusted. Yep, we're just going to assume that's done. I'm actually going to hide the uh, stick at this time. Strap in, put on your helmet, connect the mask. We can assume we've done that. And then next, I'm actually going to move my camera down as much as I can. We're going to center on this panel here, and we're going to turn on the battery master switch. At that point, uh, some of the basic instruments and lights come on. And if I jump back to the external view, we can see now that the chocks are gone, the ladder is gone, and our pilot has his helmet on. So that's nice. Uh, next, we're going to turn on the warning horn, which is labeled Avert Son uh, here. So I'm going to flip the switch. We get the warning horn. At this stage, we're going to clear the caution and warnings by clicking uh, the pan buttons that we have here. Uh, oxygen check is the next thing that we're going to do. If we go down here to the oxygen meter, we're going to press and hold the oxygen test. And that's a good test. It goes all the way to full and the blinker is blinking. We can now release. Cabin checks. Cabin lighting rheostats as required. They're all the way over here on the left console. Uh, for today's flight, I'm going to turn on uh, the one that's labeled dual console and pedestal lighting. And I'm also going to turn on the instrument panel lighting. Because it's, it's early morning, it's a little bit uh, kind of dark just now. We bring ourselves around to the further forward of the left console. We're going to make sure that the JPT emergency regulation switch is in auto. That's this switch here. It is, in fact, in auto in the forward position. Afterburner main cock switch is on and guarded. The in-flight relight control is actually underneath the throttle. It should be in the aft position. Throttle should be in stop. The slat and flap lever, which is here, should be fully forwards. Combat flap lever should be in. That's actually a button on the throttle. Uh, Anti-skid switch should be on and guarded. That's this one here, and it is indeed on and guarded. Uh, high lift device selector switch should go into off or aret. That's this switch here. It needs to go into the middle position for startup. Um, transfer filling switch should be off and guarded. That's this switch here. Ignition ventilation selector switch 
should be in left or right. Uh, if it's all the way in the bottom here, it's in ventilate. Uh, and if it's in the middle or top positions, that selects either the left or the right hand ignition system. Starting pump should be off. The left hand low pressure pump should be off. The right hand low pressure pump should be off. If we go back forwards on the console here, uh, the low pressure main cock should be off and unguarded. It is. Emergency regulation switch up here should be off and guarded. It is. Uh, the landing light control here is also off. Uh, undercarriage, uh, it's a switch here. It should be down and guarded. It is indeed down and guarded. Next page. The yaw anti-slip switch should be all the way up in the anti-slip position. That's this switch here, and it's all the way up. Pitch switch should be on. Arthur select switch should be auto and guarded, which it is. The stick uncouple switch should be off and guarded, which it is. Servos 1 and 2 should be selected, which they are. Uh, brake shoot control, which is this lever here in the side of the canopy, should be all the way forwards. It is. The canopy and bristle control should be fully aft. It is. The two jettison buttons here should be guarded. They are. The shock cone push button, uh, which is this switch here, should be pushed in. It is now. Uh, the... Oh, let me see. I got I got lost now. Uh, nose wheel steering switch should be on and guarded. That's this switch here. It is. The nose wheel steering high sensitivity button should be depressed. That's this one here. It now is. On the right console, the armament control panel, none of these buttons should be pushed in, so we can confirm that they are not. Instantaneous delay safe selector switch should be in inert or safe. It is. The matra switch should be off. It now is. Uh, emergency transfer switch, which is here in the center, it should be off. It is. Crossfeed swat switch is off. It also is. Emergency undercarriage handle, should be in and folded. That's this one here, and it is. Alternator 1 and 2 switches should both be on. They are. The inverter selector switch should be in auto. That's this switch here. It should be in the middle position. Uh, canopy seal valve control lever. It's on the underside of the right-hand canopy rail here. It needs to be forwards for inflate. When it is, you just see a little bit of this grey handle. That's correct. The RAM air switch here should be off and guarded. Cabin temperature control rheostat should be in auto. It is. The emergency cold switch should be off. It is. And the auto manual selector switch here for equipment should be in auto. It is. Okay, with all that preparation done, we're now ready for engine start. Uh, the aircraft can be started just on battery power, uh, and that's what we're going to do today. You do have the option of using uh, external ground power if you need, though. Uh, we're going to start by closing the canopy, by just clicking on the handle there. And then moving the canopy switch all the way forwards to lock it. We ensure that parking brake is set once again. It is. Low pressure main cock goes to on, and we uh, we close the, the guard for that there. Uh, we've got the starting panel at the back here. Left and right low pressure pumps go to on. Uh, and then we're going to make sure that we are in ignition. So this switch should not be in the bottom position. It should either be middle or top. We're then going to open the starter guard and that flips on the starter pump. We then push the starter switch for one second and wait for the uh, the engine to go beyond 300 RPM and then we can move the idle the, the throttle into idle. So let's quickly do that. One second, release. We're going to watch the engine instruments here. We're waiting for 300. Throttle comes out of cutoff, and now we're watching the uh, exhaust temperature. We should observe light off shortly. We have that. The engine will come up and then stabilize. There we go. It's stabilizing at around about 3,900. That looks pretty good. Excellent. Okay, that's a good start. Uh, high lift devices switch can now go into normal. Combat flaps should still be in. We can now power up the UHF radio, which is this front one, the green radio. Actually, sorry, the, it's the red radio, in fact, this top one. Uh, I'm going to put it into PAL plus G. That's the normal transmit, receive, and guard. Uh, slats and flaps lever can go fully aft. 
And if I go to the outside view, we can see slats deploy, flaps are coming down, and we can actually confirm that using the config uh, display here as well. VHF radio goes to on. Uh, both radios should be switched to 5 watts for transmission power. That's done. Inverter selector switch, we should flip it up to, sorry, down to reset and then let it go back to auto. That extinguishes the warning. The servos, you'll see that we have a bunch of warning lights to do with the hydraulics and the control servos. We have a push button here called servo reset button. Push that in, those will reset and they're now working normally. Hydraulic pressures, we have the two hydraulic systems here. Their pressures are normal. IFF goes to standby. Um, navigational indicator, we could adjust that as desired. We don't need to do anything with that right now. The standby horizon switch here goes to on. Electric pump switch goes to on. Uh, we should make sure that the horn is on. It already was. Uh, Pro Peter goes to on. RWR goes to on. And we'll start to hear RWR audio. Search light, if we wanted it, we could turn it on. We're not using that today. And at this time, I'm going to turn the navigation lights and formation lights up into the bright position. Again, we can go to external view and just confirm those. External lights are now on. Uh, next page. The site selector can go to on. That's this switch here. It can either go to on or approach mode. I'm going to move it into the middle position, which is just on. And if I move the camera, we can confirm, yep, the site is powered. That's looking normal. The heading and vertical reference system control switch should go into GM, and that will spin up the gyros. And the heading and vertical emergency gyromagnetic compass switch should also go into on. That's that switch there. And the system is now uh, going through its normal erect uh, kind of procedure. Uh, INS will now go ahead and begin INS alignment. Actually, that's... Mm, I'll leave that running just now. I guess the, the gyros are still spinning up. It's, it's tumbled at this time. Uh, the INS control head is here. We're going to move the master switch to uh, standby. And you can see we get a flashing alert. Uh, and we also get what it thinks the current present position is. Uh, what we want to do initially is uh, move this into the pause position and make sure that we have waypoint one selected. Waypoint one should be our present position. Um, in, the, in the options for the aircraft, you can select whether the initial position is always correct or not. I've told it not to be. So we can now go to F10 and do left alt and left click on our aircraft symbol. We'll get the coordinates in this little pop-up window and I can return to the cockpit and just verify that these are correct. So the lat long decimal minutes should be 3443 decimal 2 and I've got 3443 decimal 2, that's good. And we should have 3229 decimal 6, 3229 decimal 6. The initial position is correct. So with that done, uh, I can put the... Uh, I, I can actually put the system into ALCM, that's going to be fast alignment with a stored heading, and then I can press asterisk, you'll see that we now have a flashing align light, and if I put the display into STS, we can monitor the status of the alignment. Uh, the system will be good enough when it's indicating 720, and it will be fully aligned when it indicates 9er, 9er, 9er. So for now, I'm going to leave that running. Next, I'm going to go ahead and power the TACAN. That'll just go into receive mode for just now. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and tune the local TACAN, which is 7-9er X-ray. The VOR ILS, which is this unit here, will also go to on. And in the selector switch for the navigational aid, uh, I'll put it into TACAN, because that's the system I'm going to intend to use today. Air conditioning master switch can go to on. We make sure that the temperature is set for auto. And the standby horizon here can be uncaged and adjusted. That's now set. Uh, radar detector warning panel should be tested and the tone adjusted. Uh, that's actually, the, the test doesn't seem to be implemented at this time, so I'll just leave it as is. Flight controls, we check that they're free and clear. Next page. Mm, actually, I missed something. Yeah, radar. Radar was supposed to go to standby. I thought I missed something. This switch here controls the radar. Down is off and middle position is standby. 
the radar will now kind of power up and warm up. After a short d delay, the display will become live. And then once these two red lights go out, the radar is ready for use. And I could flip it fully up in order to put it into the emissive mode. Okay, before taxi, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, the safety pin from the ejection seat. We just place our mouse here and we roll our mouse wheel until the pin is gone. Oh, Takan has finished warming up. So I'm now actually going to take this opportunity to turn the Takan volume off. Uh, actually, I'm going to set the green radio as my current... Actually, no, I'll set the red radio as my current push to talk. That's set correctly. Slaved altimeter, we should set that. Uh, that's the, the main altimeter here. Uh, we actually should have QFE at about uh, 40 feet. That's correct. Now, I'll do the same for the standby altimeter. We'll also set that one for 40 feet. Uh, we would then have the option of releasing the parking brake and taxiing. So that's basically the full startup complete. There's a couple more small things that I'll do. Uh, actually, one of them would be we'll put the INS system into nav. It's now fully aligned and then put the parameter selector into PP. Uh, I'm also going to select my first waypoint, which in this case is waypoint 3, and press asterisk. Waypoint 3 is now selected. I'm going to put my navigational instrument into INS navigational mode. It's now indicating correctly. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tune my ILS, so I've got that ready for my return. We're now getting tone. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that volume off as well so that we're not bothered by it. And at this stage, I think everything is set correctly. Yep, no warning lights. Everything is looking pretty good. We would at this point be ready for taxi and we could just release the parking brake. Alrighty. That is the full procedure for starting up your Mirage F1 EE. I hope you all enjoyed that.